Pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbon. It's World Philosophy Day, Tony. Do you even have a personal philosophy? I'm Tony Kornheiser, and I do. Be kind, be grateful, be asleep by 8.30, 8.45 tops. That's the way I'm living my life in my old age. 8.45 tops. Pretty good. I thought, you you gonna, I, I thought you were going to go Boy Scout on me and be prepared. But, you know, 8.45. No. I mean, you have shaved this back now. It used to be 9.30. What are you doing? What's going I'm on? Just old. I'm just an old man, but I'm still vindictive. Welcome to PTI, <laughs> boys and girls. In today's episode, the Rockets are terrible. The Bucks are getting it together, and the Patriots are back on the field tonight. But we begin today with a report in the Detroit News that Michigan State and Mel Tucker are closing in on a 10-year contract that will pay Tucker $95 million and make him the second most highly paid college football coach in the country, second only to Nick Saban, who has won seven national championships to Tucker's zero at the moment. Most of this money is going to be provided by boosters. Will Bond, is this a no-brainer for Michigan State? Tony, I don't know about no-brainer. I mean, if you said to Mel Tucker, we'd like to sign you for five years for, you know, $65 million. I mean, would, would, would he say no to that? No, I don't think so. And, Tony, here's what I, I really believe about these situations. It's almost like players now when they sign these long deals, and after two years, I'm going to steal something from Woj, who made this great analogy and said that people now, they sign these long contracts, and after two years, they want out, and it's like they want to go to the transfer portal. And it's a great line and great analogy. I don't know if it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer to want to keep Mel Tucker. But I know, Tony, in, in three years, if he has one season where he goes five and seven, then half those same boosters who are about to pony up will want to fire him. So I just don't believe it. I have trouble believing that the two sides are happy when they sign these long-term deals because he ain't going 10 and 2 every year in the Big Ten. He's not. Nobody is. So it's, it, it's interesting that you would mention 5 and 7. Let me go over his career coaching numbers. He was at Colorado. He was 5 and 7. He got yeah. double the amount of money to come to Michigan State where last year he was 2 and 5. Now, this year, he's doing great. He's 9-1, and one and he beat Michigan. But he's 16-13 and 13 overall as a college coach, and they want to pay him $95 million. Is this a great country or what? I'm sure he's a really good coach. And I'm going to tell you something else, Mike. I think somewhere in the back of the boosters' minds, it works like this. We had Nick Saban on this campus. He was our coach. He left us to go to LSU. We had this guy. There's an opening at LSU now. There's an opening at USC now. If we think this guy is good, we got to lock him up. We can't let him leave because we let Nick Saban leave already. Yeah, I, Tony, that may be part of their reasoning. Look, boosters, and I'm one of them. In, in my situation, right here, 20 miles north in Evanston, Illinois, I qualify as one of those people. And you know what? We're crazy. I mean, we're nuts. All, all of them, every school. And the more the school wins, the nuttier the boosters are and the more in control they think they are of the direction of the football team. And right. it's great. You have to right. fund these things. And, and look, I know how crazy it is in the Big Ten and how desperately you're – that's a great point, Tony. They want to believe we got a guy, he's charismatic, right. he can win, and we're not going to let him go. But, but do I and think now it's a no-brainer for both? Uh, and I like now the, he's making more money I, than Ryan Day – who beat him last year, 52 that? to 12. How, oh, how about that, what? Tony? Okay. Tony, listen. Tony, some of those boosters are going to be unhappy three and a half hours after kickoff this week if he doesn't <laughs> if win that game. 52 to 12. I, I know how this works. You bet. You know bet. how this works. Let's move to the NBA. The Houston Rockets have now lost 13 in a row. The latest came last night in Oklahoma City. Stat News, whatever that is, points out that the team is on pace to finish 5-77 and 77 with the worst record of all time. Oh, of course, the team is paying star guard John Wall $44 million not to play this season in order to get more playing time for their young prospects. Well, Bond, should the Rockets get John Wall on the court or stay committed to this particular path? Tony, I think you can stay committed to rebuilding and have John Wall play. I, I don't understand. John Wall came into the league with the Washington Wizards as the overall number one draft pick, part of rebuilding. So I, this doesn't make any sense to me, and I feel bad for Coach Silas, son of Paul Silas. I feel bad that he has to go out there and have this. And they're saying, no, you can't have your best player because we're rebuilding, and we don't know what the optics are. We want our young people to do. 
Tony, it's a it's a fallacy to me that you can't put John Wall. So so let me get this straight. If the Houston Rockets, instead of pre- being projected are going five and seventy seven, go twelve and whatever's left, you know, sixty. What, they're, they're not going to be rebuilding? They're not going to have a shot at the overall number one pick? Of course they are. So this is just junk to me, this telling John Wall to stay away. Because you're also, the, the young players are looking at the coach and the staff like they're crazy. Like, what are they committed to? Right. What are they doing? These players are not stupid. And I think this philosophy and this tact is stupid. So it's not just $44 million this year. It's forty-seven million yeah. next year. Next year, and John yeah. Wall's not going to waive that deal. He's going to no. pay, get paid ninety-one million dollars to not play basketball in Houston. Look, you know, I did not like John Wall in Washington. I never thought he got better. I never thought he made his teammates better. I was happy when they traded him for Russell Westbrook, and I think the team was better. But you can't tell me that John Wall averaging twenty points a game, which he did last year in forty games isn't going to make a difference on this team. They're not going to be 1-14 in 14 with John Wall. They're just That's not. Right. Your, his career is essentially over because no one is going to trade for him and pick up one dime of that contract. And if you want the number one pick, Mike, has anybody said LeBron is out there? Does anybody even know who the number one pick is? No. And you take these young kids and you crush their spirits if they lose yes. every single game. You crush their spirits. So exactly the people running that right. club, I agree with you, Whoever owns it, whoever runs it, this is malpractice on their part. Ugh. This is Ugh. terrible. It's, and it's Tony, terrible. Real quickly, you know what else makes this look bad? Another factor? Like, nobody else. I mean, New Orleans has got some circumstances. They're missing their best player, have played most of the season without their two best players. But they want them out there, Zion Williamson. But, Tony, this is a season in which nobody's awful. Teams pop up. You know, Oklahoma City said, oh, yeah, we can come back from double digits down and beat the Lakers. So... Everybody's trying except the Houston Rockets. Let us stay in the NBA. Last night was good for the two teams that were most recently in the NBA Finals. Milwaukee got 47 points from Giannis Antetokounmpo, got Chris Middleton back in the lineup and beat the Lakers. Phoenix was down five after three quarters, put up 37 in the fourth, and beat Dallas for their 10th straight win. Wilbon, which was the bigger win specifically last night? Milwaukee's, Tony. Because Milwaukee has been hurting. And they've had some injuries and guys out for COVID. And they've been hurting. I think, you know, it was, what, six and eight going into last night's game. And I thought Giannis, after the game, one of the things I love about Giannis post game is he's not giving you some pablum. He's not giving you anything rote in terms of answers. He's listening, and he's telling you what's on his mind. What was on his mind post game was, no, 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 no. This ain't working. We are losing these games. The teams are taking off away from us in our division and our conference. And this has got to stop right now. And Giannis showed some sense of urgency right away. They needed that game. The Suns had won nine straight, and yeah, now it's ten. The Suns had the second-best record in the league. If they had lost last night, that wouldn't have changed much. What would they have been, the third or fourth-best record in the league? No, the Suns are playing well, and they are hammering, in some cases, some bad teams. That's what you ought to do. Good teams beat the teams they're supposed to beat. That's the first rule. Suns are doing that, man. But Milwaukee needed that game more last night, Tony, I thought. So both teams faced a similar situation. Both winning teams were at home, and they faced a team without its best player. LeBron James doesn't play for the Lakers. Luka Doncic did not play for Dallas. I don't want to diminish 10 in a row. 10 in a row is 10 in a row. I don't care where you do it. That's a big-time deal. But you're right. The bigger win was Milwaukee, and I'm going to tell you why. Because Giannis got 47 points last night. And I don't think it was coincidental. It was the first game back after the GQ story in which he said, My next challenge may take me away from Milwaukee. So what he is saying to the fans of Milwaukee is this. As long as I'm here, you're going to get everything I got every time I go out there. And you're going to get it for the next four years. So don't worry about it. So now the Lakers are not a particularly good team now, but they are a brand name. And Antetokounmpo destroyed Anthony Davis. He He was 9 for 13 on those times when Anthony Davis guarded him. And what this makes me think about, Mike, is larger than this. Because when we talk about the Bulls and the Wizards, it's why I'm hesitant to make proclamations about them. These two teams, Milwaukee and Phoenix, they proved themselves last year. They were near the top for most of the year, especially the last two months, right near or right at the top. Not like Milwaukee, not like Miami, rather, the year before got hot late 
and maybe was a fluke to get into the finals. These teams are not flukes. They're not flukes. You know? That's right. Really and, not, Tony, nobody's mentioned Phoenix. Nobody's even mentioned them. And they go out there and they clean somebody out every night after Don't, starting one and yeah. three, I believe. They've won these 10 in a row. That's right. Let's take a break. But coming up is Matt Jones getting too much credit right now. And are we sure there are any really good teams in the NFL right now? We will ask Booger McFarlane what he thinks. You know, Booger's on my podcast a lot. I know you've He's been stealing great. Booger. I'm just you've been that stealing up. Booger for yeah. your own selfish podcast purposes. Well, as I told you, I'm old, I'm selfish, I'm vindictive. <laughs> I want Booger <laughs> McFarlane to talk to me. Not many yeah. people. Bullet bourbon, part of